拙者は侍なり戦場しか知らない人間敵は拙者を殺そうと狙い続けている今でも一つの戦が終わったカバネを晒す戦いを終えることができるはずはない同じ人間を人はなぜ殺さねばならないのか時刻とはあのようかそれともこのようかそれを知る者は誰もいない森に光が入りここは豊かな国になれるのか Hello, noble ones. Today, I would like to talk about my favorite Japanese warlord, the outstanding tactician Date Masamune. Date Masamune was born on the 5th of September 1567 and he died in 1636. Now, I'd like to pause for a moment and focus on these dates. So, why are these dates so important? Well, you see, each man is a child of his time, and therefore, in order to Thoroughly understand the man, we need to comprehend the times in which he was living, the times in which he was samurai. Okay, so he was born in 1567. We are in the Sengoku Jidai because the Sengoku Jidai is from 1467 to 1603. Okay, 1467, 1603. This is the Sengoku Jidai, which is the、uh, age of the states at war. It's important to note though that. He was born and he lived in the sort of later part of the Sengoku Jidai, which has a name of its own, and it's the Azuchi Momoyama period. More on that later. Okay, studying a bit more、uh, deeply this concept of the Sengoku Jidai, we have said we have these two dates, but what happened in these two dates in 1467 and in 1603? So in 1467, we have the Onin Wars. Now, all you need to know at the moment,、uh, in this moment, in, on this video about these wars, is that it's because of the Onin Wars that we have the collapse of the Japanese feudal system under the Ashikaga shogunate. So we have a collapse of that. Instead, in 1603, we have the so called Pax Tokugawa. We have the、uh, Tokugawa shogunate raising to power, re establishing the、uh, Japanese feudal system. Now, another name for the Tokugawa period is the Edo period or Edo Jidai, and Edo being the ancient name of modern day Tokyo. And the reason why it's called like this is because power will be centralized in Edo into what is called a Japanese monarchic. Feudal stratocracy. Fun fact the name Azuchi Momoyama comes from the name of two important castles of the time the Azuchi Castle in Azuchi, Gamo District, Shiga Prefecture, belonging to the Nobunaga, and the Momoyama Castle in Kyoto, belonging to Hideyoshi. So, this is the when. What about the where? Date Masamune was born in the Yamagata Ken, Ken meaning prefecture. Which is found in the Tohoku region, the northeast portion of Honshu. Now, this area has a sort of reputation of being, yes, a remote but also scenic region. In mythology, this section of Japan was named Azuma. Now, the Tohoku area, the Tohoku region, is important because, historically speaking, is where the native Aino are from. Now, the Aino are a different, separate ethnic group to the Yamato settlers of mainland Japan. They were called Ezo, and they are indigenous people of Japan and possibly Russia, or with connection or genetic connection to Russia. The Yamato settlers, on the other hand, who are the ancestors of the common ancestors of modern day Japanese, are separate from the Ryukyuans. And the Ainu. So these Aboriginal people once inhabited this area, which faces the Sea of Japan. Of course, at the time of Date Masamune, it is the Yamato ethnicity that controls completely almost the entirety of this area.
Okay, so why was Date Masamune such a famous military leader? What did he do? Well, first off, we need to uh, focus on the policy uh, of the clan. The way the clan was strengthening itself at first it was through alliances. So how did they uh, make uh, alliances with other clans? Through marriages. Although I'd like to underline that this is not a sp uh, something specific to the Sengoku Jidai at all. In fact, you can go all the way back to the Heian Jidai, perhaps even earlier, but definitely in the Heian Jidai, for example, marrying, intermarrying with, uh, for instance, members of the imperial family was a way to secure status elevation. So that was something that, uh, that the Date clan was doing, at least at first. But there were um, local disputes between clans. Now, of course, that's something that can happen, but let's focus on one specifically. There was one retainer uh, who was an ally uh, of Date Masamune who betrayed him, and his name was Ochi Sadatsuna. So what does he do? Well, he decides he doesn't want to have anything to do with Date anymore, the Date clan, and he, he goes, he flees, he betrays him, and he goes to the Aizu province. Now, in the Aizu province, he finds the, a clan, a rather powerful clan, and which was the Ashina clan, and he joins them. So how does Date Masamune uh, react to that? He declares war to the entire frigging clan. Okay, so this is the, the kind of man that we are dealing with here. So he begins a military campaign um, in invading the lands of the Ashina clan wanting to have his revenge against Sadatsuna. As he does that, he also starts attacking lands of allied clans to the Ashina clan and he starts claiming their lands. So he starts to seize also the provinces of Dewa and Mutsu. Now, personally, one of the reasons uh, that I think he continued is because he was being successful. Because if he had met too much uh, resistance, then perhaps he wouldn't have done that. But that's just my personal opinion. But considering the fact that his troops were um, having success, then of course it just continued. He continued gaining more and more land, probably still building up on the excuse um, of the betrayal that he had from Sadatsuna. Now, um, among these landowners, there was a, uh, an interesting character, his name is Hatakeyama Yoshitsugu. Now, Hatakeyama Yoshitsugu, this man, he understands that he cannot beat uh, the data. So in 1585, he decides to uh, give his surrender and they meet in the Miyamori castle. So in this castle, they are discussing the terms of the surrender and Date Masamune asks for basically all of Yoshitsugu's lands in exchange for his life. Yoshitsugu decides not to comply and he flees, but as he is fleeing, he uh, kidnaps Date Masamune's father, who was living in the Miyamori castle, and runs away. Uh, that is forces pursue, a battle begins in the Abukuma River and both the lives of Yoshitsugu and Date Masamune's father are taken. Now, in order to fully understand the uh, historical figure of uh, and the historical character of Date Masamune, we also have to focus a little bit on other very important daimyo that you had at the time. Now, in the Sengoku Jidai, when you talk about the Sengoku Jidai, you cannot but talk about a very important daim daimyo, most, most likely the most important of, of them all, and that is Toyotomi Hideyoshi, one of the most important, okay? Now, Toyotomi Hideyoshi is a very important historical figure because he was a sort of overlord of Japan. In other words, Toyotomi Hideyoshi was a force to be reckoned with. And um, basically both the Date clan and many other clans uh, in the Tohoku region were uh, allies, they were supporters of Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Now, uh, what happens is that what you need to understand is that Toyotomi Hideyoshi is a warlord, a general, a tactician, a politician. He was uh, very different from Date Masamune. As a matter of fact, um, there are quite a lot of... I would imagine the two didn't really like each other, I think, because just to give you one idea, apart from the fact that they had a different military agenda, but for, to say one, Toyotomi Hideyoshi was anti-Christian. He actually had quite a few Christians, I think 26, but quite a few Christians executed by crucifixion. On the other hand, Date Masamune was a supporter of Christianity and a patron of Christianity. So you can see two completely different approaches. But um, as I said, uh, 
Um, now, to understand the political situation, the political balance or lack thereof between Date, Masamune and uh, Hideyoshi, uh, we have to see the date 1590. It's a very important date because it's the date of the siege or the seize of the castle of Odawara. So the castle of Odawara was a uh, the, basically the main fortification and center, neuralgic center of power of the Hojo clan. This is the basically the arch enemy and the only obstacle in the way of supreme power to uh, Hideyoshi, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. So he uh, basically forces all his allies, clans, to help him conduct this siege. Now, the, what do the, these clans do? Of course, they all respond apart from Date. At first, he doesn't want to have to do anything to do with it. Eventually, he realizes that he, although I think he already knew that, but he realizes that because of this delay in responding to the call, uh, of Hideyoshi, he believes he will be executed, he presents himself with a straight face, ready to face death. We don't know how much of that was embellished, but um, Toyotomi Hideyoshi decides to spare the man, so he doesn't have Date Masamune executed, and he says that because he understands that there might be still some uses for him. Now let's read this through historical eyes of uh, tactical and military understanding. Now I think this is an important message, um, whether it be a 100% the choice of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, or whether he was counseled to spare uh, Date Masamune, it helps us understand that from the perspective of a very powerful clan, Date Masamune was a uh, valid tactician, because otherwise he would have died. Okay, It's a very strange thing that you don't um, immediately do as ordered, I mean, people in the Sengoku Jidai would have been executed for much less, okay? This was the power of Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Because remember, we are in the Sengoku Jidai. Your diplomatic skills, your ability with words, they mean absolutely nothing, zero, if you don't have a very powerful samurai force to back it up with. Now, um, the fact that they leave Date Masamune alive is a message for us and it helps us understand the value of the man, the military value of the man. So the fact that they understood that it would have been such a waste to have Date Masamune killed um, because of what the man could do on the field of battle and what his army, loyal to him, could have done. All right, now, as I promised, let's talk about uh, Date Masamune armor. Now, the first feature that <laughs> makes it recognizable is first the fact that it's black lacquered and the entirety of his army was, had black lacquered uh, armor, which I think is really cool. And also is, of course, the golden half uh, crescent uh, Maedate that he has. Now, I've seen quite a lot of replicas. I, my, I favor the ones which are massive rather than very small ones. I don't like those. But when you have like a very long, massive uh, Maedate, I think it looks really cool. Now, what kind of armor is it? Well, of course, we're talking about Tosei Gusoku because we are in the Sengoku Jidai. So the modern type of armor, uh, the ones uh, that were used and, the, you know, the, with a better silhouette, tailored, tapered at the waist. Not the, we're not talking about Oyoroi. All right. Now, um, but still, there are a lot of different kinds of armor. Now, what you need to realize, and I will make a video, I'm preparing a massive video, which will be on YouTube, a guide to understand samurai armor thoroughly. But the most important part of samurai armor is the door, so the cuirass. Um, I own a few, as you can see, so today we will use this one for demonstration. The armor a samurai wear takes the name from the name of its door, and there are lots of different types, and again, I'm making a detailed video on this. Um, but, for example, this one that I have here, it's one of the most uh, common ones, and it's a uh, okegawa door, which means tub-sided because of the um, shape that it has. And this kind of kuiras is a nimai do. A nimai do is the name you give to the, the kind of kuirases that have one hinge and one opening, okay, on the side. The kind of kuiras that Date Masamune was wearing instead, uh, it was a gomai do. A gomai do has four inches and one opening on the side. So slightly different, a bit more complex than this one. 
Now, depending on the show, depending on the video game that we're talking about, we will see lots of different representations, lots of different iterations of the armor worn by uh, Date in terms of color, in terms of the color of the thread, and also the color of some of the plates. The main look will still be black, of course, because that's the historical reality uh, about it. But uh, you still have a lot of different versions, some of which I find really bad, but others look good. Um, in some versions, I've, I've noticed that he, uh, he has the lames uh, similar to these. So we, of course, we always talk about plate, horizontal plates, horizontal lames. These are, um, I think, this, this, the kind of cuirass that he would have worn. And some video games and shows represent him wearing those, these. But in others, he's using um, something that looks more like a hotoke do, which are the ones that you cannot see the lames, they're completely flat, okay? And then in other representations instead he has got, you can see the uh, curved domed uh, rivets. I think they all look good, uh, but I believe that if you want to have a, a real idea of of how Date Masamune's armor looked like, then we need to look at the uh, famous uh, statue that overlooks the Sendai castle, which was a stronghold that he himself had built this one here. Now, Date Masamune was a legend, a legendary warrior and a leader, but he also had a nickname and it's quite famous and it's the Doku Gan Ryu, Japanese for one-eyed dragon, the reason being that he lost his right eye. Now, apparently he lost his right eye uh, when he was a child due to smallpox, but the thing is though that Yes, he lost his eye, but he actually lost the entire organ. So he wasn't just blind on, on his right eye, he did not have a right eye. And there, are a lot of, there is a lot of speculations and there are a lot of theories and, of course, legends on why uh, that would be the case. Some say that he plucked it out himself, others say that he had an attendant do, he, do it. Reasons obviously flourished, there are a lot of reasons. The reality is that we don't really know. But we do know that he, of course, kept it covered and that gave him a rather interesting look. Now I'd like to take a little moment to share my own thoughts on this matter. So there are quite a lot of interesting daimyo uh, in uh, Japanese history. Now the reason why I favor Date Masamune, now, there are quite a lot of reasons and I'd like to see if some of these are the same with you, if we share the same uh, sort of reasons for uh, liking this warlord. Uh, the thing is that first off, of course, he was a great tactician, as I said, and some of the choices he made, um, I would compare to the choices made Made by Scipio Africanus that yes I love Rome yes I always have to mention something has to do with Rome you have to apologize but I am a, um, a Rome fanboy um, but it does I think it, it sort of it's that sort of general it's that sort of genius mind so some of the things he did on the battlefield are outstanding but I really like the mythological aura that he has because of the fact he was called a dragon because of his imposing armor because of the fact his army the fact that we said his army was was all black these are all things that really create the character but my favorite thing about Date Masamune is the moon the, the half moon the, the crescent moon uh, Maedate that he has on his helmet that is the top for me. Uh, although my, my single Kujidai Ama is a uh, Takeda clan uh, Samurai Ama, but I can easily change that. I just need to change the door, and I am receiving a, a couple more uh, door, uh, one of which I will use to sort of switch between Date and Takeda, and then, uh, you know, changing the Maedate, I will already have uh, not a 100% historically accurate reproduction of Date Masamune Ama, because of course I would have to add the sort of golden uh, parts that did make it, but considering the fact that there are there is quite a lot of personal uh, interpretation in games and and movies as well, you have a lot of different versions of Date Masamune. I think that if you have the Moon Crescent, it is recognizable as one interpretation of Date. So these are the reasons why I really like Date Masamune as a character.
So now I'd like to expand a little bit more on the fact that, as I said, that um, Date Masamune was amicable to Christianity and in general with uh, the West. So Date Masamune enjoyed foreigners, okay? He liked people, he actually encouraged people, foreign people to come and live in, in the island of Japan. And he was a supporter of Christianity. He let mi Christian missionaries uh, preach in his lands and even um, have uh, converts, okay, and baptisms, etc. He had nothing against against it. And he was even organizing, and eventually he will manage it, but at first he was organizing an expedition to have uh, diplomatic contact with the Pope in, in Rome, so the actual Holy See. At first he had to cancel that, but then he, he will manage to do that. In fact, it will be one of the first expedi successful expeditions from Japan around the world with uh, Japanese um, representatives of Date Masamune and the Date clan reaching Spain, reaching Mexico and other, and other areas. Now, um, the reason why he had to stop this support of Christianity was because he, as you probably know, uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu will outlaw Christianity in Japan and he will start persecutions of Christians in Japan. And uh, Date Masamune had would they say regretfully um, allow uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu's persecutions also in his lands. But apparently uh, he will risk quite a bit uh, to rescue a specific preacher, a specific monk, I think he was, um, from the hands of Tokugawa and he will save this monk. Some voices and some rumors say that Date Masamune's eldest daughter was indeed Christian. Now, as you know, I've lived in Japan for four years. Um, now, of course, the Japan I have experienced is modern Japan, but I can still see something that helps me understand um, the position of Date towards us Westerners and us Europeans. Um, as you know, Japan has experienced a, a political period called Sakuk. Sakoku literally means the country in chains and it's a specific period of Japanese history where the uh, Japanese um, government and authorities they s basically cut they cut off every connection, whether it be trade, whether it be anything, exploration with the West and in general with foreign lands. So Japan has been a closed country for a certain period of time, but in the times of um, of Date Masamune, uh, as you see, it depends on what warlord you talk about. Um, if Date Masamune had become the supreme uh, ruler of Japan, I would imagine things would have been different and probably uh, the, not only Christian persecution, but in general, the this sort of idea of Japan closing, putting barriers towards the West probably wouldn't have happened. But um, I understand the position of Date Masamune because Modern-day Japanese are very similar to, to um, how Date Masamune was. Um, Modern-day Japanese, I'm talking general terms of course, but the majority of Japanese now, they love the West, they love Western people, they are interested in us. Uh, they, they, I notice this all the time, I mean people stopping me in the streets just because I was foreign, okay? Um, even like um, from students wanting to take pictures with me, a lot of things, and, not, and I, had, I did not have a YouTube channel at the time, so this has nothing to do with me as a public figure, but it was just the fact that I was a young uh, for a Westerner who was living in Japan. Um, this mostly happens in more remote areas in the countryside, the so-called Inaka in Japan. It uh, doesn't happen a lot in massive cities like Tokyo because there uh, people if I have to pronounce it the Japanese way, Tokyo, because that's, you know, their people are used to it, but particularly if you go to areas such as Roppongi, where there are a lot of foreign people. But if you go to the countryside, you still can feel this uh, awe uh, and this interest and this um, atmosphere of being intrigued that Japanese people have towards people from the West. And I can see, uh, so that's why I can imagine the sort of uh, character, the sort of personality uh, that uh, Date Masamune had, and uh, and I like it. That that, that is what you know. I, some people call me Weibo. I, I laugh about it. Th there are things I have experienced Japan from a cultural point of view, from a linguistic point of view. I've worked in Japan. I. Uh, I've loved the Japanese, I've hated some Japanese, I shared laughs and tears, blood and sweat with the Japanese people. They are a people I understand, it's a country I fully understand. And there are many things I love about Japan, there are many things I hate about Japan, okay? I am as unbiased as you can be, because I 
thoroughly understand the culture and but this is one of the things I really like about J Japan is how Japanese people they enjoy and embrace anything that comes from the West they 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 the majority of them are curious are interested and that's why I can understand the position that Masamune had and I think that if I if I was if I were a, um, a Western person, maybe an Italian traveling to Japan in the time of the Sengoku Jidai, I think that Masamune and I could have been friends, considering his, his personality. Number once, what a pleasure to have you here. I hope that you enjoyed this Patreon documentary because yes, this was one of those Patreon documentaries that I make every month, month and a half sometimes. For those of you who don't remember, well on Patreon I have some patrons, meaning some donors who support me monetarily every month. And I use this money, and I wish to thank all the people who, who generously donate to me each month, I use this money to create better and higher quality content such as this video. Because of course that monetary support allows me to set aside time to pay a troupe, to pay a photographer and to invest more time in the creation of better quality content. But if you like this sort of videos, please check out my Patreon page and if you can and decide to, please support my work. Or instead you can just buy some pasta with that money. I mean I wouldn't judge you for that. People who support me on Patreon get an early access of two months on each documentary. Patreon supporters also get sneak peek videos and much more. Now talking about my Patreon schedule, unfortunately we had some problems, meaning that um, last month I, didn't, I still haven't finished the, the Patreon documentary because unfortunately my um, photographer, he twisted his ankle. We're talking about a pretty bad injury and in fact he has been in bed for the last, well for a fortnight. And I'd like to underline that a fortnight in British English means two weeks, not four nights, okay? But as soon as he gets back on his feet and he's ready to film we will get back again with patreon documentaries and better quality video outside um, footage etc also because he's got a new nikon d850 i think fantastic piece of work there camera also a couple of days ago i released a video that now is not public anymore where i uh, announced to the to, to all of you that i am now a koryu practitioner in fact i practice katori shintoryu the reason why the video is not public anymore is because i realized that i think i'm still too much of a newbie to show things and i think some time should pass and also i talked about it with my sensei he very politely asked me to to sort of wait for his review before showing um, techniques and I think that's only fair. So considering the fact that I do have mad respect for all of you choreo practitioners, I've decided to wait and then whenever I show some techniques that will be done with the review of a true sensei. Date Masamune no shinko nitsuite hanashimasho. Rinzai shu myo shinji ha no koso, kosai soitsu no eikyo uke.明神寺達主半島院の団子都となった Okay, thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching as always, thank you for your support and if you like this video please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Ciao!